You know, somebody else was going for the kill. Kwame Brown. Kwame been going for the kill all week. Uh, he, he, he beefing with Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes. He threw a shot at Charlemagne, Jamel Hill, Rachel Nichols. Uh, who am I missing, Trip? He's thrown so many shots this week. Jeremy Lin. I didn't even know they knew each other. <laughs> like that. Uh, Skip. He got at Skip uh, and Shannon. Um, first of all, Eric, I told you I just came back from Miami. I didn't want to have to deal with the Kwame Brown situation right away. We got we got to get into it, man, because it's, it's basketball news. We haven't got into I mean, all this started happening so quick. Last week, we didn't speak about it because it was just kind of starting and yeah. now we've gone through a full week of it, so we gotta address it. Yeah. Um. So here's here's my here's my issue with Kwame Brown, and I think you know one of the things that he is not realizing is when you are a number one overall draft pick, there are expectations that come along with that. Now, when people say he was a bum or a bust, it's not in comparison to everybody in the world. Obviously, you played in the NBA. You're better than 95% of the people that's ever picked up a basketball. And you played for 12 years, which I commend you on because that's really good because most guys don't last three years in the league. So you had to have done some things right, you know, and I, I mean, I know a lot of it is because you're a seven-footer. That, that, that can actually keep you in the league a little bit longer because you can't teach height. Uh, you know, but you are going to get criticism when you are the number one overall draft pick and you do not live up to that. LeBron James is arguably the second best player to ever play basketball. He probably gets more criticism than anybody and he's great. So what do you think is going to happen when you play like trash, even if you last 12 years and you made all this money in accordance to everybody that's in the NBA league, you are in the bottom tier of everybody that's ever played in the NBA. Kwame Brown is a bottom tier player. That's just facts. You look at his numbers. He has no accomplishments in the NBA outside of him lasting for 12 seasons. There's no MVPs. There's no all NBA appearances, no all defense appearances, no, no rookie of the year, no all rookie team. Uh, no, 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 nothing. He has, he has no resume other than the fact that you lasted 12 years in the league. So you're in the, in, 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 in accordance with guys like James Jones, like Jared Dudley, like the Jason Collins of the world. Those are your counterparts. And we don't look at any of those guys respect. And I'm saying this respectfully. We don't, when we talk about those guys, we don't mention those guys with the upper echelon of players. We don't even mention them at the halfway point. Those are all bottom tier guys that have, they, they have a, they have some level of intelligence that can keep them around and, you know, and, and, and float around from team to team. But bottom line is you weren't that good as a player. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, can't say it any better than you just did. Again, no accomplishments, no accolades. Um, you lasted purely off of being a seven footer who people thought may have a little potential and that never really worked out. My biggest issue with all of this though, is as you mentioned, you're the number one pick in any sport. There's gonna be criticism that comes with it, right? Number one pick in football or a highly touted prospect in baseball, if you don't live up to it, you know, Bryce Harper has had a, a good baseball career. He still gets criticized. It's, it's part of the game and, and that comes with the job. What I didn't like about this whole situation was that Kwame Brown made it personal. Everyone that has criticized Kwame Brown, at least from what I heard, and I apologize if I, if I missed any uh, critique of Kwame that got personal, but every time Kwame Brown has been mentioned, it's purely based off of his performance as a basketball player. Yeah. So when you throw a jab, when you throw a jab at Matt Barnes about his wife in a personal situation, to me, you've crossed the line now because Matt Barnes didn't speak about you personally. He yeah. didn't speak about your personal life, right? No one, Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, all those people, none of those people have ever questioned your personal life and who you are away from the court. So for you to say the things and make it personal, the way that you attack Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson, right? And even Gilbert Arenas to a certain extent, you know, calling that's him my Uncle Tom. And, calling him pale face and all of that. Like, yeah, that's, that's different. Yeah, that that's the only issue I have with it. I, I don't mind the dude wanting to stand up for himself and saying, yo, I had enough of y'all, uh, you know, with my name in your mouth. I, I get all that. But these people purely spoke about you as a basketball player, nothing else, nothing else. 
So when you say things like y'all talking about my mama's son, no, they talking about the basketball player. Yes. They ain't talking about you personally as a man and your failures as a man, whatever they may be. That's the only issue I have with it. Um, and that's their I commend job. the dude. And that's and right. That's their job. And that any media outlet is going to is going to speak on the performance of the player. So I thought he came across as ultra sensitive. Honestly, I don't I don't like this praise that he's getting from a lot of people. I really don't. Because yeah. I, I think, you know what I'm saying? I Again, this this speaks to the point that Mark, Matt Barnes made where he said, man, they don't love you. They love the drama. Of you course. know, all these people that are posting Kwame Brown and, yo, you, go ahead, Kwame. Yo, you speaking truth. Man, y'all never cared about Kwame Brown. Exactly. So let's not pretend that now because he is involved in drama that y'all care what he has to say. Y'all just, y'all hoping that this escalates into a point where it gets uglier than what it already is. Yeah. I hope at the end of the day, it never does because- Again, we're talking about sports, bro. No one has spoken about Kwame Brown as a man or discredited who he is as a man. No one's questioned your manhood, bro. So for you to bring up Matt Barnes's ex-wife and that whole situation, that to me, that that's where you cross the line, man. But yeah. we got to see how that plays out anyway. And look, you know, and he first what, what really made me mad is when when he did when he got to Jeremy Lin. He was like, yeah, Jeremy Lin didn't have a better career than me because uh, he just had, he had Lin Sanity. That right there should tell you he was better than you. <laughs> the fact that he was out here knocking down game winners and, and putting up the numbers that he was doing. And we're talking about somebody that wasn't even drafted. He was a forgotten, a forgotten man, was in the G League, worked his way up. That's started from the bottom. Now I'm here. You were the number one overall draft pick. Again, if you were drafted in the second round, and had the career you had, no one would say anything about you, ever. I promise you that. That for for a second round draft pick to 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 hang around twelve years and do the numbers that he did, you had a hell of a career. But number one draft pick is different. And just going back to, you know, Matt Barnes and 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 and, and Stephen Jackson, all the smoke, bruh, they don't talk about you. I I've listened to. Damn near every podcast that they've put out. Kwame Brown was only mentioned one time, and that was because of Gilbert Arenas, who has the right to speak on that man, even though he's not playing anymore because they were teammates. So you're a part of his storyline. They both got drafted to say, I didn't even realize they both were drafted in that same draft class. Gilbert Arenas was just drafted in, in the second, was second pick in the second round. That yeah, year. Gilbert, Gilbert came over to Washington, I think, Kwame's last two years there before Kwame left. Yes. Because Gilbert started his career with Golden State and was in Golden State for three years before he went over. Yes. So so he has a right, though, to speak about, about Kwame Brown because your stories are intertwined. Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson can care less about you. They don't talk about you like that. And then, unless, I, unless I miss something, I don't recall on any other podcast them speaking on Kwame Brown. So for you to take it that far and, and start getting personal and talk like, you, you you just you you're doing too much, you know, because and, and you can't especially when you get in that when you go in that Stephen uh, Stephen A Smith and Eric you know I got a I, I got a love hate relationship with Skip Bayless so anytime somebody talk about Skip Bayless I'm all for that but you can't critique these guys because we if, if we're talking about what they've done in their career these guys are Hall of Famers I I, I don't rock with with Skip Bayless. But if you're talking about a journalist, broadcast journalist, and what he's done, Hall of Famer. Stephen A. Smith, Hall of Famer. He talked about Michael Wilborn, Hall of Famer. Michael Wilborn is like the highest paid on ESPN. These guys have Hall of Fame careers. So if you want to talk about something, the, the, the way they were talking about you, they were talking about your career. Critique their career. You can't. So you got to get personal because – you can't critique their careers because they were in the upper echelon. They they were all they were all journalists. <laughs> you know what I'm saying they they made the first team all journalists. You can't say that. So, bro, you enjoy your 15 minutes of fame. I don't care about you speaking your truth or however you want to clap back, whatever. Keep the personal stuff out of it, and you got to stop because I think there's a little bit of a delusion in there. Because my question to Kwame Brown would be, how would you like us to describe your career? What would you say you were as an NBA player, as it, in, in totality, from being drafted number one, having accomplished nothing in your career with the exception of longevity, never made an all-star team, wasn't even close to being an all-star, 
probably wouldn't even have been a starter outside of the fact that you're a seven footer on, on most teams. Let's, let's be real. If, if, if Kwame Brown was six, three, he wouldn't have been in the league for, for 12 years. I'm, I'm just calling the spade a spade that not a height, height gets you, gets you extra years because again, you cannot teach height. So part of that, the reason that you were able to last 12 years is because you're a seven foot guy and seven foot guys don't just come along like that. But you know, in comparison to the other centers in the league, where you're in the bottom 30, 32 teams, you probably, probably rank in the bottom from anywhere from like 26 to 32. During your playing career, if we and we just talking about the center position, I'm not even talking about everybody, because if that's the case, you'd be, you'd be a lot lower on the list. Yeah, he. I mean, we know that he wasn't a top 100 player any any year that he was in the league. Um, but yeah, that that to me is what I, I don't like the most. Like you made it personal, and listen, if you had an issue with people critiquing your work, then you should have been better at your work. You know what I'm saying? Like. If, if I'm at yeah, if, if I'm at work and my supervisor's critiquing my work and saying you just not getting a job done, it wouldn't be right for me to now make it personal with that person. He ain't say, taking a personal jab at me. He's saying when it comes to this work that you've been assigned, you ain't getting a job done. So, you know, I, like you said, and that's a that's a great statement. How would you like us to categorize your career then? Because it, nothing, yeah, nothing about it screams respectable or makes me say hey that was a solid career you know n- nothing about your career says that you know you, you played with michael jordan you played with kobe bryant both of those guys said you had no work ethic both of those guys said that you had no drive to be better than what you were so if two of the greatest 10 players that the league has ever seen have said that about you how do, are, how are the rest of us supposed to look at your body of work there ain't nobody at work. <laughs> that's it. it's, that, that's it's, it. just, it's just years accumulated. And w- w- for me, I, my thing, my, you know, I get it. You know, maybe MJ was too hard on you. You were a 17 year old kid dealing with the goat who has high expectations for everybody. Maybe that might've been too much for you, but then you choose to go to the Lakers right after that. And Kobe is probably the closest carbon copy of Michael Jordan we're going to see who is not easy on, on teammates. You go there. You probably should have went to, you know, he talked about Jason Kidd. He probably should have went to go play with Jason Kidd or, or somebody else who doesn't have that type of, 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 of mentality. Maybe it would have been easy for you, but you don't go from MJ to Kobe. You might as well stay with MJ. And, and the comment he made about, you know, as a rookie, they would work me out two and a half hours before the game and then sit me on the bench most of the game. That's most rookies' life. Yeah. Most rookies, right? Like, I, <laughs> you I, per- do I personally, personally, not secondhand, during my times of going to the garden, shout out to the crew out there who used to always take care of us. And I've been at shoot around and I always use this story. One of the one of the illest things I had ever seen. I, I was at shoot around very early one day. I'm talking, it was a 7:30 game, and I was there like at 4:30 for an event we were doing. I saw Dame Lillard already in a full sweat. Him and CJ were going through two-man drills, shooting off the pick and roll, shooting off the catch and shoot. They did this. Now, mind you, it was like 4:30 in the afternoon. They did that for a good hour and a half leading up to six o'clock. Then they stretched for like another 20 minutes on the court before going into the back to change into their uniform. Dane proceeded to drop like 30 plus on the Knicks that night. CJ had another 20. Now, mind you, these guys were putting in work three hours before the game already and still had enough energy to play another 35 to 40 minutes when it was time to come. So you mad because the Wizards were making you work out two and a half hours before the game? Everybody's working out two and a half hours before the game. That's how you're able to perform when the lights come on, right? We've heard the stories about, right. We've heard the stories about how Kobe would shoot a thousand jump shots in the morning. We've heard Dwayne Wade, who's a Hall of Famer himself said, I thought I was doing something by getting to the gym at seven o'clock. When I would get to the gym at seven o'clock when they were on the Olympic team together, Kobe was already in a full sweat because he had been there since six o'clock working out. Yeah. So you telling me all these other great players have no problem with going to the gym, putting in the work before the game, but you felt slighted because they made you do it and then sat you on the bench. Yeah, exactly. You know that that's going to improve. Guess 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 what? Um, and I'm just going to go go through a couple of of draft picks uh, uh, that that actually got to play their rookie season. Let's say you got you got Zion, 
he, he played he played his rookie season. Uh, you got Trey Young. He played his rookie season. He was getting minutes. Luca was getting minutes. John ja Morant. These guys get minutes. You want to want to want to go back? We can we can go back even further to past draft picks that were drafted and and they got to play. And even if you just want to go to the guys guys out of high school, T Mac was getting was getting burned his his, his his rookie his rookie year. You know what I mean? KG was getting burned his rookie year. Kobe was getting burned his rookie year. You weren't good enough to be on the floor. And when I and, and I'm not saying you weren't good enough to be there. I'm saying that on the on the on the 13 man roster, you weren't better than the guys that were on the floor getting that playing time. Right. And he he, he used he had used a comparison too, like, oh, Mike never really wanted me there. He wanted to trade me for Elton Brand. Well, Elton Brand was a pretty good ball player. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think Mike was justified in thinking, hey, you know what? If we could flip this kid for another young guy who's actually pretty productive, we may be in a better situation. So, so what if they wanted to they wanted to trade you? There's always going to be a doubter. Your job is to go out there and make every person that says you can't, you're not this, he's never gonna be that. Your guy is to make a lot, your job is to make a liar out of every person that doubts you. There you go. And obviously he wasn't up for that challenge. Again, that's not a knock on him as a man, but as a player, you weren't ready for that challenge, man. Let's you don't want to play on, the dozens man. with us. Just, just in case he see this and now he tried to get personal with us. You don't want to play the dozens with us. Nah, 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 nah. You want all the smoke. You, you don't, trust me. <laughs> trust me. We we not we not as forgiving as, as Matt and them dudes. Don't, don't, don't go down that path. Don't go down that path. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. <laughs> Uh-huh. This is real fans, real talk. Talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought.